I'm too tall. Every time I talk into a microphone and it's on the ground, it looks like I'm making an announcement. You know what I mean? I don't feel like a comedian. I'm like a principal at a middle school trying to calm you down. Like, listen up. The sloppy joes have been contaminated with E. coli. If you feel ill, go to the right. Look at this 45 degree angle. This is how you yell at kids when you want them to get in a single file line. You know what I mean? Cameron, hands to yourself. It's better. I uh, feel good. Uh, a woman once told me I have a very confusing body. <laughs> Not the ideal thing you want to hear when you take your shirt off. I'm puzzled, you know? But I get it, I have weird proportions. Every item of clothing I own is too big and too small at the same time. Uh, very hurtful explosion of laughter, thank you. I don't even know you guys, you can't laugh at that. I don't know, I have a weird, I don't think I'm out of shape, but I do have the body type of a great athlete from the 1930s, you know what I mean? And I see that where it's like, well, he's been drinking milk in the dugout for 12 hours. I think this guy's about to belt some home runs. That record will stand for 75 years. I, I was at a bar a couple weeks ago and a friend of mine came up to me and she was like, Luke, I love seeing you at bars because it makes me feel safe because I can always find you. And I was like, oh, that's nice. She's like, yeah, it's because you're tall and I never see you talking to anyone. I was like, okay. <laughs> you could have just said the tall part, you know? But instead you had to be like, I like you because you're a sad lighthouse. Just stand in the corner, guide drunk people to the bathroom. That's your job. No, I'm, not, I'm not alone. I'm in a beautiful, loving, anxiety-based relationship right now. Anybody else? Yeah, it's good. A couple people, scared, clapping. That's nice. I, I don't know. I, I'm very anxious. I think I'm sick all the time. I'm always Googling symptoms, you know, online. And my girlfriend thinks she's pregnant every day. Great combo, right? We're both a haunted house upstairs. I... I can't go to her with my weird fears about my health anymore because she just one-ups me every time. You know, I'll be like, babe, will you look at my back? I think I have skin cancer. She's like, skin cancer, that's cute. Tell that to your son. I'm like, ah! I'm a little bit of a street fighter. I don't know if you guys could tell. A little, been in a lot of fights. Probably gonna fight tonight. Probably gonna get in a fight tonight. And if I'm being honest, I've lost every single fight I've been in. I've lost so many fights, it's like a record I'm proud of. Some of you might be thinking, why is this fool bragging about losing fights? But I'll tell you why, what's more impressive, a guy who won nine fights or me who's been knocked out 35 times? <laughs> but even though I lose every fight physically, I win every fight emotionally. I'm more of an emotional fighter. Cause anybody can win a fight physically, a big dumb gorilla can win a fight physically. You wanna be a big dumb gorilla or you wanna be a mastermind who hurts people's feelings? <laughs> Cause that's how you win a fight emotionally. For example, my best knockout move is after I've been knocked out and the guy's walking away victorious, I like to yell out, hey fool, I've been beat up by better men than you. You know how confusing that is? That's a man who's gonna go home, look himself in the bathroom mirror and ask himself, I won that fight, but why do I feel like a bitch ass loser? Cause it hurt your feelings, that's why. Cause my fighting technique is similar to that of an angry girlfriend in an argument. I just win the fight by saying the most fucked up thing that had nothing to do with the argument whatsoever. <laughs> That's how women win fights. Only men are dumb enough to think you win the fight physically. But women are smart enough to say something so fucked up to you that it stays with you forever. <laughs> I know that because a few years ago I was arguing with my ex-girlfriend and out of nowhere she said, That's why your mom's going bald. <laughs> We were arguing about rent money. <laughs> what did my poor mother's balding scalp have to do with any of this? I am from the gorgeous Caucasian haven of Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, to all the white people in the room, hello. So good to see you again. You all look exactly the same to me. I... <laughs> I lived in New York for the past six years, which was a really great place for me to learn that I have absolutely no standards or respect for myself. Uh, I lived for the last three years with a woman that I met on Craigslist. She was a dog walker. She told me she was 30. She was, say it with me, 48, 48 years old. She was 48 and she lied. <laughs> um, but it, it was, it was uh, cool. I, 
actually because um, there was laundry in the building. Uh, <laughs> one day she asked if her parents could stay the weekend. I'm a reasonable roommate. I was like, yeah, of course, no worries. Uh, that weekend was, say it with me, nine months long, nine months. I lived with her old parents for nine months. They would wake up and boil eggs at four in the morning just because they could. <laughs> um, but it was actually really um, cool and like moving uh, because there was laundry in the building. Um, it, it's just not the way that I like imagined my early 20s, you know? Like I always saw myself like off the coast of Greece, you know, eyes closed on the back of a Vespa, wearing one pair of jeans I'm sharing with my four very differently sized friends. And, you know, instead it was a lot more moments of like looking down at a subway grate, realizing I'm looking at a rat, also the rat is looking directly back at me. I can now tell the gender of a rat just by looking at it. He is a man, we are going out to tapas next Friday, so see how that goes. I live in LA right now, uh, which is really cool. Yeah, but it's, I've been having a, a sort of a creepy problem. Uh, I can't start running into Heim. <laughs> it's just I can't, I can't stop running into Heim. Um, if you're not familiar with Heim, uh, Heim is a group of uh, any three white women with mid-length hair who look like they were born in an urban outfitters and raised in an anthropology. So, um, so like be on the lookout for that. <laughs> I lived in Philly for like two years. Yeah, go birds. And then, uh, but it was funny because I moved like from a white trash town to Philly like right during the presidential election. <laughs> you, you pussies. Uh, no, but it was funny because like that was a big jump. I went from like an all white trash town to then to the city where now all my new friends were like real woke. They're all like, did you guys all vote Democrat? Did anybody here vote? Do you guys, do you guys remember how like confident you guys were? <laughs> going into that last one? Uh, you remember that? A little borderline arrogant going into that. All right, don't let it cost you again. <laughs> no, I relax, relax. I did not vote for him. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> no, I, act I actually did not vote for him, which that was tough. Look at me. His whole campaign was at me. I was watching TV, he was like, are you a fucking fat idiot? I was like, yeah, dude. Yeah, what are we doing? What the fuck are we doing, dude? We're building walls? Hell yeah. I took skull out of my mouth to come up here. And I didn't vote for Donald Trump. Makes me like the Nelson Mandela of central Pennsylvania. I want you guys to know, though, I do have black friends. <laughs> oh, it's nice having black friends when the rest of your friends are just fucking goofy white guys. It's nice, you get some outside perspective, some advice. You just gotta be careful of the advice you take from your black friends when it comes to, like, sex. When you look like Uncle Buck, it doesn't <laughs> translate. Like, this is the advice my friend gave me when I went on a date with this chick. He was like, hey, yo, Shane, you don't want to go too deep in the pussy. She's always going to want the dick. He's like, you're, you're worried about depth? Like, depth is a problem? I didn't even know they had depth. I'm just happy to be there. You're worried about, like, depth is an issue? He was like, you don't want to give her the whole dick. I'm like, that's all I have. I've never been, like, halfway in and been like, oh, oh. You got to earn the rest of this. Dick. That's insane. Depth? That's crazy. I'm worried about like the noises I'm making. Like I just I just sound like like a shitty ghost the whole time. Just like, oh, oh. Just, I'm almost done. Man. man, I grew up around a lot of white people, you know, and we were all poor. So I grew up around poor white people. Yeah, they exist. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I felt bad for the ones I grew up with because these cats, they were poor and they had no talent, you know what I mean? So they were just fucked, you know what I mean? All, 
All they knew how to do was just walk the earth, you know what I mean? They were just like always confused and shit. I'm like, how'd that building get so tall? That's weird, that's a, that's a weird thing. <laughs> But man, let me tell you, when that TV show Jackass came out, they fucking floored, man. <laughs> they were like, this is how we're making it out of neighborhood. Forget basketball, man. We're gonna get a bunch of shopping carts, man. We're gonna get a bunch of mouse traps, man. We're gonna get a bunch of scorpions. And I'm like, man, y'all should get a bunch of books to read, you know what I mean? Because these shopping carts ain't really helping y'all knowledge, man. You ain't gaining nothing from it, you know? <laughs> These are the same two brothers that when I was 10 years old convinced me that my birth name was not Molly Carney, but it was in fact Meat Brick. <laughs> Meat Brick. They made a fake birth certificate and crinkled it up <laughs> and burnt the edges. And I was like, this is my destiny. <laughs> so little Meat Brick went to school the next day in my jumper and I went up to Sister Karen's desk and I said, Sister Karen, something's come up. I will not be answering to Molly anymore. You will call me Meat Brick. Went back to my desk, signed my math paper Meat Brick like I was Oprah. And my friends started calling me MB and I love nicknames. Uh, I gave myself my own nickname uh, the summer before and I was like, Dad, You'll call me sport, or we're not talking for the whole summer. So my dad and I didn't talk for an entire summer. Can you imagine being on the playground with a good old meat brick? I was like a big 1990s Roseanne bar in fourth grade, okay? I ate meat bricks for breakfast. Playing Red Rover, and I'm like, call me over. And they're like, Brick, and I'm like, forget your lunch money, I'm gonna eat you all. <laughs> yeah, so the principal called my mom and said, uh, Mrs. Carney, your daughter's a little bit of a loose cannon. She's telling the entire student body that her name is Meat Stick. And my mom goes, my daughter's name is Meat Brick. <laughs> Stand-up comedy is my favorite thing in the world to do, but when people find out about this, they're always like, oh my God, I can't believe you do stand-up comedy. That's so brave. But don't call me brave for doing comedy. You can call me brave for dropping out of college. <laughs> that was a risk, right? <laughs> Upper-class white woman with wealthy parents and no degree, ooh. <laughs> that could have gone any number of ways it would have ended with things still being pretty good. <laughs> Just like mostly positive outcomes. <laughs> I did go to Boston College for two years. I was there studying to be an English teacher. And I found out pretty quickly that teaching is kind of a racket. There's a lot of bureaucracy. You have to like learn how to use firearms. <laughs> <laughs> and then in our second year, they told us that when you teach English, you actually have to read the books. <laughs> and I was like, for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are pretty long. But college wasn't a complete waste of $100,000. Because I got an eating disorder out of it. <laughs> I'm fine now, though I'm body positive. I believe in my body, my choice. I had a my body, my choice moment a few months ago. I got an IUD put in. Uh, and an IUD is a T-shaped thing they stick in your uterus. It like spins around and swats away sperm. <laughs> At least I think that's how it works. And that was a big lifestyle improvement for me. Uh, I became a slut late in life because I never went to camp. <laughs> I feel like that's where a lot of that foundation is laid. So I've been making up for lost time. Also, like, my relationship with my dad kind of fucked me up because it was super healthy. <laughs> so I, like, trusted men for a long time. <laughs> but I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I'm not crazy. <laughs> and I've been doing comedy for a few years now. I will say that it has definitely changed who I am. Willing to have sex with. Because <laughs> for years I was sleeping with hot dudes. Uh, and now I sleep with comedians. <laughs> it's 
so it's just different. <laughs> I definitely don't recommend sleeping with a comedian uh, unless after sex you enjoy lying next to someone, watching them scroll through their own tweets. Because that's happened to me with more than one person. <laughs> They're just like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And I'm like, oh, your index finger does work. <laughs> yeah, it's like a weird time to find that out. <laughs> I'm from a, a small country uh, uh, called Ecuador. Uh, here's a, all right, there's a couple, okay, there's a couple more Ecuadorables in the audience maybe, I don't know. There's a couple, couple of facts that most Americans don't know about Ecuador. Uh, number one, it exists. It's a place, real. Uh, number two, not in Mexico. That's a big one. You can take that to pop trivia next week. Uh, but it's cool. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting being from, from a small country that a lot of people don't know about because like, it's weird for me, you know? Because in Ecuador, I grew up there, and in Ecuador, everybody knows about Ecuador. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of the things we all share. Like, and that doesn't happen here, and I'm always surprised about it, you know? Like, I'm, like, I'm always like, are you trying to tell me that you don't know what's Ecuador's main agricultural export, really? Like, that's bananas, you know? It's... <laughs> it's bananas. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's the dumbest joke I have. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did this show, and this woman comes up to me after the show, and she's like, oh my god, you're from Ecuador. That's so cool. I actually have a brother-in-law who's from Guatemala. <laughs> wow. Uh, that is uh, really interesting, because I have a cousin who has a learning disability, so... <laughs> Are we just throwing non secretors at each other? Is that we, what we're doing? Luckily, all my friends who are having kids are very chill about it, you know, none of this, like, gender reveal nonsense stuff. Can we agree we're just over that at this point? Yeah. Thank you. It's just, like, two things. First, it's boring as hell. I don't care what your kid is. I don't give a shit what your kid is. It's still a human baby child, okay? That's predictable. <laughs> you know, it's like, give birth to a fucking puppy, then let's rage. That would be awesome. I would party for that, for sure. And second, it's, we've just made too much progress with gender, you know? Like, I don't need you to identify your child to me before they're even in this world. I'm perfectly happy waiting for them to tell me who they are when they're ready. That's cool, yeah. I don't, like, think about, how cute would it be instead of bar mitzvahs and quinceañeras, like, young teens were inviting each other to their own gender reveal parties, right? <laughs> I'd love it, I'd love it, you know? Some kid at school's like, hey, Taylor, are you a boy or a girl? And Taylor's just like, I don't know, I guess I have to find out Saturday at the roller rink. My confidence is through the roof right now, man. Earlier this week, I spelled definitely without using an autocorrect, so. <laughs> you ever do that shit before? Spell a word that you forgot you knew how to spell? Feels good, just ride on that confidence. Week before that, last week, I spelled silhouette in an email. Psh. Yeah, I just started typing. I was waiting for that red line to show up. It didn't. I was like, nigga, y'all can't tell me shit today. I'm a genius. I threw it in five other emails that day. I just threw it in there. I have nothing to do with the email. 9 a.m. meeting, everyone. The silhouette of your life. <laughs> But I'm happy. I'm in a new relationship, and I love my man. He's not even here, so that shit is real, bitch. I love my man. <laughs> He's wonderful. And I was able to get him, single ladies. How did I do this? How did I get this wonderful man? Because I stopped accepting rides from my ex-boyfriend. Stop doing that shit, bitch. <laughs> Stop accepting rides from your ex-boyfriend. Stop smoking blunts with your ex-boyfriend. Stop fucking your ex-boyfriend. <laughs> and you will find a man, okay? You will find a man, because you want to know why you're not going to meet your new boo sitting on old dick. <laughs> on God, that's God. That's not how God works. <laughs> you don't get to have your old dick and eat a new dick, too. I forget how the saying goes, but you don't get to do that. 
You don't get it all. You gotta hate your ex. You need to hate your ex. And I fucking hate my ex. I hate him. Because he had a ponytail. He devalued me as a woman. He's an open mouth breather. Why are these people still alive? Why are we still letting them exist? They need to be taken out. Y'all watch cartoons growing up? Anybody watch cartoons? Yeah. Y'all watch Scooby-Doo? Yeah. You remember at the end of every episode, they would catch the villain, and they would always say the same thing. They would be like, I would've gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids. It's ridiculous. You ride the bank in a scuba diving suit. You know what I mean? <laughs> we live in Arizona, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like if there was like a modern day Scooby-Doo, it couldn't be the same crimes. It couldn't be like, oh yeah, he stole the family heirloom. It would be like, the gang walks into the crime scene and Fred is like, all right, gang. Looks like we have a triple homicide on our hands. We better split up. And look for clues. Or like uh, the Powerpuff Girls. You guys watch the Powerpuff Girls going on? Yeah. They said how Professor Utonia made them was he took sugar, spice, and everything nice, and the mysterious chemical X. I don't know if you know this, that's how you make children. <laughs> that's the ingredients for weed brownies. 